hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hello friends, welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog. And this time we're chasing wildflowers with my friend Hayden and his dog Shady. In this episode I share some of my favorite techniques for capturing wildflowers, some mistakes to avoid, and a few images that I'm really happy with. I really hope you enjoy the video. I'm photographing some lupin here, just gorgeous fields of purple. It's really incredible. And I'll show you what I'm looking at here right now. So I've got the Sony A1 here and I'm using the 16 to 35 lens. And just look at how beautiful this is. We've got a little bit of wind blowing around the lupin, which makes it a bit tough to try and focus stack shots like this. We'll have to see how that comes out. But uh, if I aim the camera up here, you can see I've got this lone tree that I'm focusing on. And if I stop the camera down, now the sun is right behind these trees. A little bit earlier, the sun was peeking right through and I was using F16 to create a sun star right on the edge of the tree. And I think that'll look really nice. But uh, unfortunately doing the vlogging, sometimes you, <laughs> if I was to try and set up the vlog camera, I think I would have missed that moment. So had to get that shot already, but uh, then I'm doing multiple exposures and just kind of aiming the camera down, doing a panorama and focus stacking it. So it's a bit of a construction project, but yeah, just a beautiful day here so far. So here is the shot that I was just working on. And I will say this was an absolute nightmare to process. Not only was this a focus stack, an exposure blend, but also a panorama. And the minor amount of wind that was blowing while I was taking the shot really made it a challenge to try and focus stack this. I ended up using Helicon Focus to get the initial focus stack done and then I had to do a bit of manual moving and stitching to get the flowers to be completely crisp. In hindsight, I think I would have opted for a more simple composition in this situation and probably saved myself a huge headache by just pulling a little bit away from the flowers, doing F18 or F20 and then bumping my ISO a little higher to deal with the wind. That way my shutter speed can be a bit higher as well. All that being said, I am pretty happy with the way this came out. I thought the lighting was really nice here, especially with that sunstar right on the horizon blooming from the tree. And this was definitely one of the more interesting trees that I found in the area. After capturing this one, I pulled out my 35 millimeter film camera and here's what I shot. This was a pretty fun image and a really interesting contrast to the previous image. This is captured with a film stock called Cinestill 800T and it has some really interesting characteristics. You can see the halation effect right on the horizon, that deep red that's blooming and glowing right from the highlights. So nothing groundbreaking here, but I thought it was a lot of fun to compare this shot to the digital files once I got my scans back. Just beautiful. I've done a bunch of variations of this shot, trying to figure out which one is gonna work. But uh, now the sun has just completely gone behind some clouds and it's behind that tree line in the distance. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head in that direction and look for more spots where the sun is shining through. We'll see what else we can find. beautiful in this direction, really soft lighting, and just the clouds out there catching some of the warm sunset glow. Pretty nice. I think this would be worth just a quick 35 mil shot. So I've got the uh, 
what is this 24 millimeter on here 24 millimeter lens and I'm just gonna focus on infinity f11 and I'm gonna overexpose the scene by a bit and do 1 25th of a second JD, JD, is that a stick? Oh! Here's just one more 35 millimeter film image with that sunlight glowing across the tree line. I thought the colors of this image looked really nice, but after shooting this one, I decided to wander down to the shoreline to see if I could get some lupin with water in the background. Once I got down there, the sky started blowing up with incredible color, and I decided to focus on the more simple technique of capturing these lupin that I had discussed earlier in the video, pulling away, doing F16, F18, and even bumping the ISO a bit to make sure everything is crisp, sharp, and the wind isn't causing any long exposures. Well, I've been rushing around trying to shoot sunset, and uh, it was way better than I expected. The, the sky lit up with just incredible red and orange tones, and it ended up being a little bit of a scramble where I was just like, oh, I can't find a composition. But uh, I ended up kind of on the shoreline and here's what I was looking at. So that sky was absolutely incredible to witness. The glow on the horizon matched with some of the reds in the clouds and that gradient from the warmer tones to the bluer tones in the tops of the clouds. And I felt like it balanced really nicely with the cooler tones in the loop in it as well. So I went with a vertical composition this time for this image, and I think it was because I wanted to include a bit more of that sky gradient and the lupin down below. When I tried the scene horizontally, it just didn't really work. It didn't have quite as much balance, and I felt like the right side was a little bit too cluttered. So funny enough, I did try this exact same composition with film, and here's how it turned out. See here with that Cinestill film, we're getting that depolation right on the horizon. I thought the colors worked nice here. I do like the way this came out, although if I was to go back and reshoot this exact composition with film again, I would probably use a higher dynamic range film like Portra. But now I'd like to hear from you. Which one of these two images do you enjoy more? Do you like the film version of this photograph or do you like the digital? Please let me know in the comments. After witnessing this beautiful sunset, it got a bit too windy and a bit too dark to take any more images because I would have had to switch to long exposures. And if you've tried shooting wildflowers, long exposures when there's wind, it just looks a little bit odd. So I decided to call it a night and then I went back out during the day to scout a new spot. Well, hello everyone. It's day number two of chasing wildflowers and uh, striking out a bit today. I went to this beautiful park in uh, Northern California, which usually has some wildflowers, lupin flowers and whatnot, oak trees. And uh, I'm not seeing anything. I actually just walked up this hill to get a better vantage point of the entirety of the park and see the other hills. I mean, I've got like a 360 degree view. But you know what? We've got like three or four hours before sunset. I gave myself a lot of extra time because I kind of figured this was gonna happen. I mean, not that I wouldn't find any flowers, but I just wanted to give myself a, a, a bit of extra time to maybe pick a different location if this was to happen. This was kind of the worst case scenario. Um, and that's why I always stress in all these videos, take the extra time 
to scout your locations, give yourself as many hours as you really can to do things like this, to make mistakes. But that being said, it's a pretty nice walk and, come here Shady, oh! Shady the dog is back. My friend's dog is hanging out with us today and oh, she wanted to go on a nice hike. Is this a good hike? Do you not care that there's flowers? <laughs> She's like, this was a great hike and I don't know what you're complaining about. I think one of the most challenging thing about wildflower photography in general is just finding the wildflowers. A lot of it comes down to planning, scouting, walking around. Where the flowers are can change year by year. Each year brings better or worse blooms. And unfortunately this year just wasn't quite as good as previous years. And at this spot, there just wasn't a lot going on. So I decided to drive back out to a place that I had scouted previously where I knew there was some flowers. But when I got there, there was 100% cloud cover and it even started raining a bit. So instead of doing wide angle photography, I decided decided to switch to my 100 to 400 lens and capture some abstract scenes of the flowers in the distance. love the way these abstract shots came out and that deep cloud cover was actually providing a nice bit of diffuse light across the landscape. I love how in scenes like this the grass, the rocks, and the flowers suddenly lose a bit of their literal context and sort of become brush strokes. And in this image specifically I loved the zigzagging patterns and the different color contrast here. All of these just ended up looking like abstract paintings. And if I can give one last tip for wildflower photography, I'd really encourage you to be creative, play around. Of course, the wide-angle dramatic scenes of the sky and the sun star are fantastic when you get those opportunities, but you can create some beautiful images of flowers under really any lighting situation. Before we end this video, I'm just going to show you a few of my favorite images that I captured of wildflowers on the California coast. As always, I really appreciate you all watching. Please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel with the bell notification on so that you'll always know when a new video is coming out. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.